Today, I'll walk you through how to pull token balances from your wallet into your decentralized application. The balances you see here are the balances that I have in my wallet on the Ropston testnet. You can see here when I open up my wallet that the values are the same. Now this is for Robston, but it works the same for all networks. I've already written the code, so let's walk through it together. And I'm going to make this really easy to understand. First, we have a couple simple imports. I'm using React. You don't have to, but I am, so I import React. And then I import the use state and use effect hooks. Next, I import ethers, which is my library of choice for interacting with the Ethereum blockchain. I import some CSS that just came with the Create React app that I'm using. And then we need to have the contract addresses for all of the tokens for which we want to get balances, excluding Ether. We don't need any address when we're dealing with Ether. Here I have the contract addresses for the Uni token, for the Compound token, and for the Wrapped Ether token. And I fill these addresses by searching for these token contracts on Etherscan. Then we need an ABI, an application binary interface for an ERC20 token. Here I'm importing it from another file that I've created. This is the same for all ERC20 tokens, so you can find one and copy it in yourself. And this just tells Ethers.js what functions the ERC20 token has and how to work with it. Now, because we're using React, we do our usual function app, and then we initialize a few variables with React's use state hook. Firstly, the wallet address. Um, we're going to store that so we can display it in the UI. And then one more for each of the tokens that we'll be getting the balance for and displaying. So Ether, Uni, Compound, and Wrapped Ether. Now let's get into pulling those balances. Here I've used React's use effect hook so that this code runs when the app is opened. And I've created an async function because there's a lot of logic where we don't want anything else to run until we get a response back. The first thing we do is get the provider. And the provider is the Ethers.js object for interacting with the Ethereum blockchain in a read-only way. That means you can't write to the blockchain, you can't actually execute transactions, but you can retrieve information. So here we use new Ethers providers Web3 provider and we pass in window.ethereum. So the next thing we need to do is set up the signer. And to do that, we start with the provider and we call the function send and we pass in eth.underscore request accounts and an empty array. And this is straight from the ethers.js documentation. And then we call get signer on that provider. And this will prompt the user to connect their wallet. So first we're gonna get the balance for ether. And this is really easy. All we need to do is on the signer call get balance. And that's an ethers.js function and it directly gets the balance of ether that's in the wallet. Now it comes back in way, which is the smallest divisible unit of ether. But if we remove the first 18 decimal places from that, it will give us the ether value. And then I just set that value of ether with set ether so that we can display it in the UI. Now getting the balance for tokens other than ether is a little bit more complicated, but not that complicated. Just stick with me while we walk through it. The first thing we need to do is get the wallet address for the user that connected their wallet. And we'll be using this in a moment, but I'm also going to set it with set wallet address so that we can display that in the UI. And then here, what we're going to do is aside from just creating a variable called uni, which will store our balance of Uniswap token, is we initialize a local instance of the uni token contract, the contract that manages Uniswap tokens. And we do this with ethers.js with new ethers.contract. And then we pass in that uni token address that we hard coded at the top of this file. 
we passed in the ERC20 ABI that we imported from our ABI.json file, and then we passed in the provider. If you find the video you're watching helpful, do me a huge favor. Scroll down to the thumbs up, give it a click, and then hit subscribe. It helps keep me motivated to keep making awesome and in-depth blockchain tutorials to help you out. Now back to writing code. And this allows us to interact with the Uniswap token contract to get our balance of Uni. Unintuitively, when you want to get the balance for a token other than Ether, you don't make a request to your wallet, you make a request to the contract that manages that token. So that's what we do right here. Uh, on that contract, we call dot balance of, and we pass in our wallet's address. And it will return the amount of Uniswap tokens that are on this address, that are in this wallet. And then again, like we did with Ether, we remove the first 18 decimal places so that we get a human readable value of Ether. And I set it here with set uni so that we can again display it in the UI. Now we do the same thing with Compound. We initialize a local instance of the Compound token contract with Ether's JS again. And the only difference here from above is that here we're passing in the Compound token address rather than the Uni token address. We pass in the same ERC20 ABI because all ERC20 tokens have the same ABI. You interact with them in the same way and that's what is so great about ERC20. And then we pass in the provider again. On that contract, we call dot balance of. We remove the first 18 decimal places and then we set our value, uh, the, our balance of compound. And we do the exact same thing with wrapped ether. The only difference again being that we pass in the wrapped ether address. We call dot balance of, passing in our wallet address, and then we format that by converting it from way to an ether value by removing the first 18 decimals so that again, it's human readable. And then we call this function we define that has all this code inside with on load, that's what I named it. We display these values below in the HTML and we get this. And that's all there is to it. It's very easy to get token balances that are in a wallet and display them. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. And if you found this video useful, click the thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you next time.